if I were a company that burned diesel in any one of my many operations, there are basically four things to look at. One you should look at, are you keeping your equipment tuned right, idling as little as possible, because idling in and of itself wastes fuel, costs you money, puts more pollution in the air. Can your equipment be retrofitted? So there are these particulate traps, there are oxidation catalyzers that can help with that respect. Sometimes you may even want to decide to replace your equipment. Then you can look at cleaner fuels, biodiesel. There are several biodiesel distributors around the state. Go talk to them. What are their prices? How much fuel do you need? It's relatively simple. It's just like getting any fuel. You, you, you talk, talk first with your own fuel distributor and see if they'll provide it. Um, and if not, they can figure out a way to do so. Burning a cleaner fuel and burning a fuel cleaner. And the cleaner fuel is typically an ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, which has very, very low sulfur contamination in it. Sulfur prevents the installation of these advanced pollution control devices because the sulfur poisons the catalyst in these units, making them worthless. So by taking the sulfur out, we can now start installing these advanced technologies that have been kind of like on automobiles for a number of years. just a number of vehicles out there right now that are running engines that when they were made were, you know, met the standards, but there's definitely cleaner technology available and there's ways to make them cleaner. Those trucks are going to continue to be on the road for a number of years and, and, and they, they are a large contributor. Sometimes they're called diesel particulate filters and sometimes they're called particle traps, but it's basically the same type of device. But there's actually, there are a range of options so we can talk about, at the high end, the most efficient device is a diesel particulate filter, but there's also mid-range devices that may work on a broader range of vehicles. Um, and then there's also an oxidation catalyst, which is more of a flow-through device, which can fit on virtually any diesel engine out there, but gets, you know, 20% reductions. The particulate filter will reduce about 95% of the particulate emissions out of the exhaust stream. So it's really the cleanest thing uh, to put on the engine. So the small customer will probably look at doing retrofit. The larger customers will do uh, equipment trade out. They'll buy new engines that meet the standard uh, new equipment uh, because they can afford to. But then the old equipment floats down to the next tier of user because it doesn't just get destroyed, it gets moved out of that big customers fleet and down into the eventually maybe the farmer hauling his produce to market. The retrofit devices generally are being added to the old legacy fleet or older engines that aren't quite as clean as those that are currently in production. So the retrofit is really out there for the small business to uh, meet emission standards to make their engines cleaner to you know depending on what they're doing to make their customers and their employees happier. Particulate trap can be used on piece of construction equipment and other off-road sources of diesel as well as on older trucks that aren't built to the new specs or school buses can be retrofitted with these particulate traps. The filters are readily available and actually they're available from dealers in Oregon and so when a fleet manager wants to think about doing this typically what they'll do is they will go out and assess the fleet because it not every device will fit on every vehicle, and so they make, at this point, they're still looking at a customized fit. But generally, once the order is placed, it'll take six weeks for it to be uh, manufactured and then shipped back, and then it's a matter of maybe two hours to take the muffler off that was there and replace it with this pollution control device. Really, the device, as long as they're fueled correctly and operated correctly, they'll last the life of the vehicle. Uh, so and, and be able to be used on other vehicles because they are virtually indestructible.
diesel exhaust causes increased incidence of health problems. So we want to try to minimize it as much as possible and we have the solutions. I mean diesel particulate filters will reduce diesel emissions by 95 percent. We just need the money to get it done. It's just a matter of trying to clean up the old ones and we'll be on continuing that effort for a number of years. The engines will be out there 30 years and in uh, that 30 years environmental standards change so that's why we are, we're looking at a retrofit program to get all that legacy fleet and upgrade them with retrofit devices because the engines when they were made 30 years ago there were no standards environmental standards so today we're doing retrofit on those and then the current engines we're producing are what we call clean diesels and those engines emit very little to nothing out the tailpipe. The state of Oregon offers a tax credit of 35 percent off Oregon income taxes owed for the cost of installing this technology on diesel vehicles. And then two, there's also um, federal grant money um, that is being available for this to support this kind of work and we've been very successful in securing those kinds of grants to help people uh, get into this new technology and to really show that it really works. And the thing that's really important for, for users is they want to know if I put this on, will it make my truck run worse? Will it harm fuel economy? What's it going to do? Because it's, a lot of people are very wary about those kinds of changes. And what we've been able to do with these early adopters and, and some of these people that we've been able to get grant support for is to show that, in fact, it does work and you can still get the value and the promise and the, and the strengths of a diesel engine while getting it to run much, much cleaner than otherwise before.